Pentecost is seen as significant for two reasons. One is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The second, the birth of the Christian Church. I would like us to consider for a while these two things. It is to be noted that there are different accounts of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There is John's account which has Jesus breathing on his disciples as they gather in the upper room. Here the giving of the Holy Spirit is gentle, as a breath, and is given in person by our Lord. It is accompanied by no rush of wind, no fire. It is intimate and personal, given in preparation for the task that the disciples would be sent out to fulfill. Luke's account is different, but Luke himself is a different type of writer than John. Luke likes to rearrange his material. He likes to use symbolism to show that everything was preordained and to emphasize his message. Luke places Pentecost 50 days or seven weeks after the resurrection. The number seven is significant in Jewish literature. Seven is the number that symbolizes wholeness and perfection. Fifty is seventy times seven plus one. Itself also in signifying a new beginning. Fifty years, of course, is the year of the Jubilee, when past sins and indiscretions were forgiven, when those who had fallen down on their luck were given another chance. Over time, the 50 days after the Passover became the Jewish harvest. Later, Judaism transformed it into a feast of salvation history, celebrating the giving of the law at Sinai and the establishment of Israel as God's people. But Luke is not finished yet. He has 120 believers assembled on the day of Pentecost. His hearers would have recognized the numerical symbolism 12 times 10. Here was the true Israel ready to expand. Then comes the Spirit as wind and in tongues of fire similar to stories told about Sinai and even echoing that of Babel. Just as Luke begins his gospel with an account of the birth of Christ, so he now begins his book about the church with the birth of the church. The message that Luke wants to leave with us is that the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church was a defining moment in the establishment, growth, spread, and identity of the Christian faith. Much like the moment of Jesus' baptism when the Spirit affirmed his calling and identity and led Jesus into the wilderness to prepare for his earthly ministry. A defining moment is a point when people look back and realize that it was at that specific moment in time when a change was made that positively impacted a life or lives for good. It is not just another point on the daily measure of time, rather it is a moment from which all future time is forever changed. And that moment for us as a church was Pentecost. Whatever may have happened on Pentecost Sunday, the awareness of the gift of the Holy Spirit led to a positive change in the disciples' lives. It is not so much that the disciples' conditions 
and circumstances changed. But they themselves had been changed by the Spirit so that they were able to react to the world and circumstances through the eyes of their faith. I am reminded of a quote by Viktor Frankl, who gives some insight. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. This change within the disciples led to a boldness in defending Christ crucified, a zeal and a desire to proclaim the gospel and the message of salvation. This in turn thrust the spirit-filled church into seeking to accomplish God's mission within the world. The Spirit also led them to become a community, sharing the little that they had so that no one was without, meeting together in prayer and to share in the Eucharist. The work of the Spirit was seen as a community event. In his book, Reading the Bible Again for the First Time, Marcus Borg writes, and I quote, the coming of the Spirit is the reversal of Babel, the beginning of the reunion of the co human community. End of quote. And much of Paul's teaching on the Spirit was also about community. Almost every Sunday we say the words, Though we are many, we are one body. In a world where so many feel alienated, alone, and who lead fragmented lives, there are many who yearn for purpose and meaning. The Spirit has the power to bind different people into a new community of faith. Pentecost was therefore the defining moment which changed the way the church saw itself and emboldened it to be both missionary in its orientation and unifying the Per the members into a community of faith. The recognition of the Spirit in our lives, whether at baptism, confirmation, or some other moment, can also be for us a defining moment in how we understand our mission as members of the Church. It led to a zeal to live for Christ, to boldly and courageously bear witness to the Gospel, and to create new bonds of fellowship and unity. Where it is absent, then these things fail to occur. But for a spirit-filled church, the results are there for all to see. By the time the book of Acts arrives at its 17th chapter, it is declared by those around of these spirit-filled men and women who said, these are they who have turned the world upside down. Today, as we look at Pentecost, we pray that we too will be impacted in a powerful, life-changing way by God's Holy Spirit.
Let us pray. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Gracious God, hear the deep yearnings of our hearts and let it be formed into words. Give us the courage to yield ourselves to the transforming power of your Holy Spirit and carry out in us and through us your work of new creation. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen and ascended one. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in the collect for Pentecost. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.